What you wanna know? What's going on, people? Mike C. Town here. Welcome to the episode of What Do You Wanna Know, where you ask your questions. If I like your questions, I answer your questions on camera. Uh, I haven't done one of these in a while, an actual uh, viewer question, and uh, I got a pretty decent one, man, so let's jump right into it. Maldoror is dead said, uh, first off, cool name, hey man, a couple years ago Boyd Rice was supposed to play Toronto but was stymied and thwarted by some stuffy activists that clearly have the CN Tower stuff way up their ass. I know you don't like the guy, but don't you think he should be able to do his thing? To me, art is controversy. Love, Cam. So this is an interesting question that I think bleeds into a whole subject of like blind support and separation of the art and the artist. But first, I'll answer your question uh, directly. Boyd Rice, yes, I'm not a huge fan. I like some of his music. Uh, I think I like him now a lot more than I used to back in the day. But the thing with me and Boyd Rice is, I, I sometimes my opinion wavers between him being a troll or him actually believing some of the ideas that he talks about. You know, he said before that he's not actually a Nazi and he's had people speak out in his favor of him not actually being racist. But, you know, him appearing on that cover with Bob Hike or going on the Tom uh, Metzger show, those things didn't help. Even though they were a really long time ago, they stick in our memory. But right now, no, I don't think Boyd Rice is serious. I don't think he's a Nazi. I just think he's kind of a lame shock rocker. Now, should he be allowed to play? Absolutely. This is one of those free speech things where I feel that everyone has the right to say what they want, even if I don't agree with it. But as I've said a hundred thousand times, man, freedom of speech is not freedom from consequence. So if you want to say edgy shit for the purpose of being edgy, then you shouldn't be surprised when people get upset. In fact, you should be happy when they get upset. It would seem like that would be the end goal of saying offensive shit to offend people and piss them off. So do I feel sorry that Boyd Rice's show was canceled? Not really, uh, I don't care. Uh, in fact, I feel like it would be more of a problem if he was actually racist. See, if he were actually racist, then I feel like it would be more of an issue because the person is being authentic, you know, and they're being punished for stating something they actually believe in. But if the person is just trying to piss people off by playing with certain imagery, then he kind of gets what he gets, you know? Seems like actual Nazis would have an issue with this too. Like, why would you want someone who doesn't actually hold your ideologies going around pretending that he does? That just seems weird. Or maybe most of you white supremacists are too stupid to even think about that. As far as protesters, you can call them names all you want, but for some people, man, words and actions actually mean something. You know, people may get offended because the words that you think are no big deal have been tossed at them followed by real acts of violence. You know, I've been called nigger many times in my life and some of those times it was actually followed by real violence or threats of real violence. I even have a story about this on my channel that I'll try to remember to put in the description section down there. But for the average straight white male, these words mean nothing because there are no words in the English language that have a history or a social context for you the same way as other slurs. Let's be honest, cracker just doesn't fucking cut it. It's not a viable response to the word nigger. I'm sorry. There's no real history or power behind the word cracker. And that's not a slight against white people at all. I'm not saying at all that you should feel guilty about that. I'm just stating a fact, but that's another story. And I'm just saying that if you have no words of offense for you, then maybe you shouldn't tell other groups how they should react to offensive terms. You know, you have no experience in that area. So it's hard for anyone to really take you seriously. And that can go for a male telling a woman not to be offended by the word bitch. That can go for a straight black or Asian man telling a gay white man not to be offended by the word fag. It's not really a race thing. It's more of a privilege thing. And plus, as far as the protest goes, you should be more mad at the club for giving in and canceling the show than you are at the protesters, man. The club had more of an obligation to protect free speech and artistic expression than the protesters did. And your statement of art is controversy. I agree to that to a certain degree. The thing is, art has the right to be controversial without being punished. That's the thing. Uh, art doesn't have to be controversial, but it can be. And this leads into a similar topic, one I've talked about briefly on my channel, and that's the separation of the art and the artist. Can you appreciate 
a work of art, even if you disagree with the creator, specifically if you disagree with them morally. Um, and I think the main thing to remember when it comes to this subject is that artists are people just like everyone else, and people do dumb shit. Just because the person creates a great painting or a fantastic song doesn't mean they're immune from basic human mistakes. I own some of Boyd Rice's music and I don't feel bad about it. You know, I own the music of a few shady characters uh, because most of the time I'm able to make a different argument for a piece of art than I would for the person that actually created it. Um, you know, I think JT Leroy, if you guys are familiar with her, wrote some incredible, heart-wrenching, poignant, and amazingly striking books. But because of the whole controversy with who she was in real life and the story she came up with concerning her identity and the effects it had on the trans community, people now see her books as trash. And I think that that's complete bullshit. Furthermore, Charles Dickens was a racist from what I understand. And some of his books are still required reading in schools. Roman Polanski had that, uh, that issue with sexual misconduct with a minor, but are we going to sit here and act like Rosemary's Baby and Chinatown aren't fantastic films? No, Caravaggio was a murderer, but I absolutely love his work. He was also accused of being a pedophile, and I even read that he did this painting of Cupid. I'm sure you've seen it, and apparently the person that the figure of Cupid was modeled after was apparently one of his victims, a child. But that doesn't mean that that picture is not beautiful. And that doesn't mean that his use of light and dark wasn't just incredible and it didn't change the art world to a certain degree. And it doesn't mean that his painting of like St. Francis in Ecstasy isn't absolutely amazing. Some people are of the mindset that enjoying the art of a terrible person is in some way celebrating that person, that you are now saying that you value art over life. And I say that that's not really true. You can, you can want for an individual to be punished for whatever wrong thing that they've done, but that doesn't mean that the art that they've created is now invalid. And simply saying that you enjoy this piece of art, that's not saying that you support this person's beliefs. It's also difficult when you think of art as extension of the human character. So the piece of art in some way represents something that the artist feels deep down. Um, but especially when it comes from an artist whose music is so personal. So if we're talking about, say, a Kanye West versus a Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, from what I understand, he just does songs that are catchy, you know, that have a popular sound. Whereas Kanye, as much as we may hate him as a person, he puts his heart and his soul into his music regardless of the negative outcome. So this makes it hard for us to ignore the creator to a certain degree. And then you have the age-old argument of NSBM, of course, where I've talked about that plenty, where some, not many, but some of these guys choose to put their Nazi-ish beliefs into their music. But I still think it's important that even if the art represents something that's gross and ugly and primitive and negative, that we still evaluate that work of art separately from the artist, regardless of how vile that person might be. Because here's the thing, I look at art and instead of dwelling on who made it, you know, outside of simply thinking about if it's aesthetically or sonically pleasing, I judge it on how adequate of a job it does getting its point across. You know, if the piece of art is meant to make me feel happy, does it make me feel happy? Or, or do I get a substantial understanding that that's the point that it was trying to make? If so, to me, then it was a good piece of art, you know? So does Katy Perry's song Firework get me hyped up and make me feel happy and triumphant? Absolutely. So I enjoy it personally. But similarly, does a Goat Moon song seem to like pull me into that world of the seedy and gross and scary Nazi underground? Um, if so, then I'd say that it's doing its job when it's doing its job well. Now, that acknowledgement of the art doing its job well is not the same thing as you being able to say that you personally enjoy it. There are themes that I simply don't want clogging my mind, so I tend to avoid them. Plus, if you get into the whole headache of trying to figure out, you know, one's motivations for creating a piece of art, then you're just going to drive yourself crazy, and that's totally another video. 
and acknowledging that there's nothing wrong with enjoying these pieces of art is also not the same as a desire to actually own them. See, this is where I personally draw the line. This is only me. I don't judge people who think differently, just like I hope that they don't judge me. But for me, I wouldn't want to actually support these people and these bands monetarily if they are firm believers and supporters of messages that I am vehemently against. So I'll listen to Burzum all day long, but I would never give him any of my money. You know, I may listen to Brand Nubian in my car, but I would never pay to go to a Brand Nubian reunion because I don't think Lord Jamar deserves a single penny of my money. The reason I can do this is because I look at the art almost as a separate entity. The art is a byproduct of the artist's existence, if that makes sense. But the art is not the artist themselves. Just like the artist is not the art personifier, at least they're not always. What I mean is, you know, this record, whatever record that I may own, it does not represent the artist in full. So I have no issue having it in my possession, but for me to give money to a person in order to fund whatever deplorable agenda he might have, that's where I say I can't do it because I don't want to personally feel responsible for anything that person may say or do. And I know that that's not a logical stance at all, but it's my stance. And I don't have to be logical when it comes to governing how I exist in this world when it doesn't affect anybody else but me. It's not about being perfect and knowing you know, where your money goes. So I don't want a bunch of comments of, oh, well, you buy gas and gas does this. Oh, you buy, you know, uh, whatever cleaning product and they support this. I'm not saying that. It's about doing the best you can when it comes to the issues that you personally care about. If you feel weird about this whole concept, trust me, I totally understand. It's not for everyone. You know, if you don't feel right owning art that's made by deplorable people, that's fine, man. Don't own it. Or if you really want it, get it secondhand. Um, but it's all about your own personal comfort level when it comes to this kind of shit. It's not for everyone else to understand or really debate. And similarly, if you don't give half a fuck about the themes behind the artwork or the attitude of the creators that made this art, that is totally fine fine man i think automatically jump into the conclusion that a person is racist because they listen to music or they enjoy a painting made by someone that may be racist i think that mindset is completely fucked so listen to as much offensive music as you want to you know I, as long as you don't let those themes seep into your own worldview then i think you're good of course if your love of this art makes you want to start exhibiting these themes or even pretending to exhibit these themes by promoting ideas and symbols that you probably don't even really understand just because you want to look evil or sketchy or anything else. And that's a different story because I see that a lot and that shit is so fucking hot topic lame to me. You know, sheeple are the worst type of people on this earth, so don't be one of them. Appreciating art for art's sake is great and I think that that's what we should all do. You know, and in the end, I think that learning to separate the art from the artist, it's a necessity for anyone who has a basic interest in art. You can't go around judging every piece of art based on its creator, you know? And if you do that, then you're gonna be narrowing your view down significantly once you consider that the majority of the people that you meet in your life are mostly shit. So why in the world would the art world be any different from the real world? I'm gonna end it there. I probably did not address the subject as great as I would have liked to, but that's what I got. Uh, hopefully that helps. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down there. Are you able to separate the art from the artist? Do you think people should separate the art from the artist? Or do you think that the artist should be directly tied to his art and should the art then be banned if the artist does something that we don't find morally acceptable so yeah leave a comment let me know what you guys think and as usual thank you for living thank you for loving thank you for being you and i will see you guys next time all right peace bitches